Hi, it's Tom Gregory here and welcome to this video where you'll discover how to encapsulate your own specific Gradle build logic into a plugin in a simple and reusable way. And most Gradle builds use at least a few plugins to add extra functionality, so why not make use of this powerful mechanism to share build logic between projects? And in this video, we'll be building up a step-by-step -step example of exactly how to create a Gradle plugin, and then you'll be able to apply these steps to your own requirements to create your own plugins. But before we go ahead and start writing plugins, we need to understand exactly what is a Gradle plugin, so let's get right into it. A Gradle plugin is essentially an add-on for your build that adds some additional functionality, and it can be applied in your build.gradle like this. So you have what's called the plugins DSL in Gradle and you can apply plugins which have a particular ID or version. And it adds some kind of functionality or build and normally it's one of two things. And first up, plugins can expose tasks. So tasks allow users to execute things exposed by the plugin. For example, with the Maven Publish plugin, it exposes a task published to Maven Local. And these tasks may also be configured in the Gradle task graph automatically to run by default. And an example of this is the Spring Boot plugin which attaches the boot jar task to the assemble task like this. And when you run assemble it's automatically going to run boot jar and that's going to create you an executable jar file. And then plugins can also perform some action when they're actually applied. So as soon as a plugin is applied it can do anything really and this may be to perform some action or configure the build in some way. And the best way to understand this is by an example. So if you apply the Java plugin, it automatically adds the main and test source sets. So it's configuring your Gradle build in a specific way without you having to run an actual task. So how do we configure a plugin? Well, some plugins allow configuration that can be applied in the build.gradle. And this can be something pretty simple by just setting a few parameters or it can get quite complex where actually the plugin configuration resembles a domain specific language and for example the Java plugin allows you to configure tests to be included or excluded by tag like this so this is a configuration that you could put in your build.gradle if you had the Java plugin applied so in terms of today's example plugin that I mentioned before, it's going to be a plugin that allows you to do a simple diff between two files. And I mean really simple, it's just going to compare the file size. And it's going to expose a task which will allow you to do the diff, and this will be called file diff. And you'll be able to configure this plugin in the build.gradle like this. So you'll define this file diff configuration block and then you'll just specify two files, file 1 and file 2. When you execute the task it will print the result to standard output as well as write a file. And this plugin will be clever because it will only rerun the task when the input file has changed. So if file 1 and file 2 have not changed at all and you rerun the task it won't actually do anything. And lastly, as we are good developers we will have a test. So how do we go about designing a plugin in terms of what classes are required? Well the main class with the plugin is the plugin class top level which defines what exactly happens when the plugin gets applied and normally this makes use of a few other types of classes and the first one on the left here is the extension class which is a way of configuring your plugin and actually the configuration that you saw earlier in a build.gradle that normally maps to an extension class so in our example today the extension class will have a configuration for defining the two input files and then on the right here you've got a task class and a plugin may define multiple types of task class but essentially the plugin will create an instance of a task class and associate that with a name so in our example today, we'll have a task class which will be there to do the diff between these two files. The plugin class will create an instance of the task class and associate it with the file diff name so that the user can run dot slash gradle w file diff. So how do Gradle plugins get published? Well, this happens in much the same way as a normal Java project. So normally in a Java project, you would create a jar file that would be published to a public or private Maven repository. And this happens in the same way. So today we'll have a separate project for our 
plugin and this will be a git repository and within that project we will have plugin classes and a build.gradle and we'll configure that build.gradle to publish to a maven repository and in our case today that's going to be our local maven repository and once that jar file for the plugin gets published then we can head over to another project and apply that plugin and then it's going to get pulled in and all of the functionality that that plugin exposes will be available in that other project so now we're ready to go ahead and start writing some code but if you want to save your fingers because I'm such a nice guy I've provided all this code for you over at github.com slash tkgregory slash file diff plugin and the link is in the description. Okay we're going to start off by just creating a new directory in which we'll create a new project so I'll create a directory here file diff plugin let's call it and then I'll cd to that directory and now I'm just going to do a git in it in that directory so it's initialized a git repo in there and then let's do a gradle in it to initialize a gradle project and we'll just have a basic project for now and it's going to be groovy and we're going to call it file diff plugin first things first I'm going to open this up in IntelliJ IDEA I mean as much as I like Vi um, I think IDEA is going to be the better tool in this case so I'm just going to navigate to the file diff plugin and select the build.gradle file and now the project is open in IntelliJ and it's built successfully first things first we're going to go ahead and edit the build.gradle file and add all the components that we need in order to be able to go ahead and write a gradle plugin so I'm going to delete this comment and then we're going to need two plugins here and the first one is groovy because Groovy because we're going to be writing this plugin in Groovy and Groovy is my preferred language to use when writing plugins. You can use Java but because Gradle supports Groovy so well I find it the best option. And then we're going to add the Java Gradle plugin and this adds a whole load of functionality that we need and it does it automatically which is going to set up various things like class paths for example and the right dependencies so that we can very easily do plugin development and we'll need a group because when we publish this plugin it's going to be published under this group and I'm going to put it under com Tom Gregory. feel free to choose your own group obviously and then the version here is also going to be used when we publish this and it's going to be 001 snapshot and then we're going to add some repositories and in this case we actually need to use the jcenter repository because we're going to add a dependency in the dependencies block here and we're going to actually use alt insert because it's easier than typing this out so alt insert and then add maven artifact dependency and I'm going to search for something called Spock Core and I'm going to choose the version here 1.3 Groovy 2.5 and just hit add and that's added that dependency and I'm going to set it to a test implementation because we only want to use this for our tests uh, this is basically a Groovy testing framework that allows us to do given when then style tests really easily and we'll want to exclude here the module groovy all we don't want to bring in the version of groovy from this dependency we want to use the version that we already have and actually if we want to use exclude here we do need to put this in brackets like this and now if we go to gradle and refresh we'll see that this is now building correctly <laughs> going to go ahead now and create a new directory where we're going to be putting our code and that is going to be source main groovy com tom gregory plugins file diff so there's the directory and you can see that IntelliJ automatically recognizes it because we have the groovy plugin and then we can go ahead and first class we're going to create is the extension class so create groovy class file diff extension just file diff extension and if you remember from earlier this class is going to essentially contain the configuration that we need so that users can use our plugin and configure the two input files that are going to be diffed and this class represents those two files so we're going to have 
two class variables here and we'll define them as final and we're going to have a property of type file, file1 and let's just import that here, that's going to be the Gradle property and likewise, I've just copied that line, we're going to have file2 and then we'll have a file diff extension constructor and this needs to create this needs to take in an object factory and then in this constructor we actually need to initialize these two properties as objects.property file for file1 and then the same again for file2 and then we also need to annotate this constructor with inject so what's happening here rather than just defining these class variables as type file we're wrapping them with the property type and what this does in Gradle is it allows you to essentially use lazy configuration so these properties do not need to be defined when this code is executed they only need to be defined when the file is actually accessed and this is really helpful in Gradle because oftentimes you will apply a plugin before you actually configure it quick interruption here and I've just been editing up this video and later on you'll see that I make a few silly mistakes and then I go and correct them so just for a bit of fun see if you can spot these four mistakes along the way whilst I'm writing the code the next class we're going to create is a task and this is a groovy class called file diff task and when you create a task in Groovy, you do need it to extend default task, which we'll do here. And then just like our extension, we also need to define property of type file for file1, file2, and then we'll also need a result file, which we're not going to get from a property, we're just going to hard code that in this plugin and that will be project build directory slash diff result dot txt and one other thing we're going to need to annotate these two input files with is the input file annotation and if you remember earlier when I listed out the requirements of this plugin one of them was that if the input file doesn't change and you rerun the task then it's not going to actually run anything because it's going to detect that there's no change to the inputs and that's what this input file annotation does it makes use of Gradle's incremental build functionality so when you write a task you need to annotate a method with this task action annotation and that essentially tells Gradle which method to execute when this task is executed so we're just going to have a task here called diff and it's going to have a diff result. We're going to have some very simple diff functionality. We're essentially going to diff the size of these two files. If they're the same size, we're going to print out that they're the same size. If they're not, we're going to detect which one is the largest file and print that out. It's not a very elaborate diff algorithm, but it's going to illustrate how to use plugins quite nicely. So I'm just going to have an if block here, and I'm going to say if the file one property, and we can say dot get to actually get the file and the size if that is equal to file2 size then the diff result will be files have the same size at whatever the file size is and the else condition here is going to be finding out what the largest file is by saying file1 dot get size if that's larger than file2 size then the largest file is file1 otherwise it's obviously file2 and then the result of the diff here will be something like the largest file name was the largest file at whatever size it was and this diff result string we're essentially going to be writing that to our result, result file and then we're going to be printing it to standard output and we'll also print the fact that we've written the file to and then we'll include the file location 
And the last thing we need to do here is create a, another Groovy class for the plugin, which is really going to bring all this together. And we're just going to call this file diff plugin. And plugins in Gradle need to implement the plugin interface here. And that has a type of project. And then we need to implement an apply method. So essentially, when in the plugin DSL in the build.gradle, you do you specify a plugin to apply, this is what gets called immediately. So first up, we're going to make use of the file diff extension to enable the user of this plugin to define the configuration. And the way you do this in Groovy is to say project dot extensions dot create and then you pass a string and this string essentially equates to however the user is going to define the configuration in the build.gradle so we want them to define it with file diff and then within that block they'll also supply the file 1 and file 2 and then we also need to pass the type of the extension so that's the extension done and now we need to actually create a task and assign that task to a particular string which the user will be able to execute on the command line. So I'm going to do project.tasks.create I'm going to pass a string which I want the user to be able to execute which will be file diff and then I also need to pass the the class which we just created and then I can have a closure here and essentially, essentially I'm going to map from the extension to the plugin class. So I'm going to map the the two files that are being configured by the user to the two file properties on the task itself. So file one equals project dot file diff dot file one and likewise same thing with file two. Last thing we need to apply here is to create a plugin properties file and this is really a way that your plugin gets discovered by name and it needs to live in source main resources so I'm just going to create another directory in here and then in that directory we create a file and the name of the file is essentially how we want to be able to refer to our plugin so I can say diff and then it's a dot properties file and in that file we need to have a property which is implementation class equals the main implementation class so that is the plugin class there so in terms of our plugin that's all we really need for the code but of course we haven't actually tested it works and it's more likely than not that I do have some typos somewhere so we're going to go ahead and write a integration test for this so I'm going to create a new directory here and that's going to be source test groovy com tom gregory plugins file diff And then we'll just add a Groovy class here for a file diff plugin integration test. And Gradle provides a very easy way for you to write these kind of tests. It provides a framework that allows you to essentially write a build.gradle file in your test and then create another build from that file and execute tasks against it and then verify what comes out in the response. First off, we're going to declare a rule and this is going to use the the JUnit temporary folder rule and that's just going to create a throwaway directory in which we can create build artifacts and we'll need a build file and then we'll create a setup method and the Spock framework that we're using will automatically pick up the setup method and it's the equivalent of the JUnit before method and in there we're going to initialize the build file with Test project dot new file and we'll create a file build.gradle and then we can use this groovy syntax to append to a file and we can use triple quotes to have a multi-line string here and we'll just define a plugins block 
and then we're going to refer to this plugin using the name that we had in the properties file up here com.tomgregory.filediff properties or rather just com.tomgregory.filediff and then I'm going to def define a test here in, in the Spock framework you can just um, pass a string so we'll have something like can successfully diff two files and we can have this kind of given when then syntax which is kind of nice and we will define the input files so we'll have test file one and then we'll use the the rule again to create a new file test file one dot txt and likewise we'll have a test file two here and then we'll once again append to our build file in our test and we're going to use the configuration so remember in our plugin when we set up the extension we defined a string file diff this is where in the build.gradle we can go ahead and define file1 and we need to pass a file object which we can do by calling this file method in Groovy and passing the location which is test file one dot get name we're going to use a relative location here and then likewise for file two we'll do test file two dot get name so that's our build.gradle and then what actually happens when we run this is we get a result from we're going to use this gradle runner class gradlerunner.create we're going to pass some properties here the project directory which is just testprojectdir.root some argument and the argument here is going to be file diff so just like on the command line you would run gradle w file diff that's what the argument is and then we also say with plugin class path which is going to use the correct class path defined by our plugin and then dot build and that's going to create a result and then in the then section we just want to say result dot output dot contains and then it should contain the string we had which was files have the same size because both of these files are actually empty so they're both going to have the same size of zero presumably and then the task that we ran which we can reference with this colon and then the name of the task and we can say the outcome of that must be success and that's our assertion so let's try running this now on the command line and we'll see how many typos I have and we can do this running Gradle W test Wow it said run successfully so let's take a look in build reports tests test and index.html and we can open this up in the browser Ah, interesting so even though it said run successfully we don't have any tests run and the reason for this is that I forgot to extend specification here and specification is a Spock class that you need to extend in order for it actually to pick up your test so let's try that again now it's running tests so we do have a failure here could not determine constructor argument missing parameter of type object factory or no service of type object factory so that was in our extension the problem here is that I've imported the wrong object factory type it needs to be the Gradle one that's better and I've also incorrectly named it so let's call this objects and then we're going to say objects dot property so let's try that again hopefully third time lucky okay we have one more failure file not found diff result.txt the system cannot find the file specified so the problem here is that I forgot to annotate the result file with output file and this output file annotation means that Gradle is going to understand that this is an output from our build so let's run the test again 
and now we have an error where it's saying missing property, no such property success. So we need to say task outcome dot success. This is definitely 100% going to work. And now our test result is successful. In order to get our plugin deployed to Maven Local so that we can then use it in another project, we need to make a few more tweaks to the build.gradle here. And the first one is to apply the Maven Publish plugin, which makes sure that everything's in the right format that Maven understands, and also provides the Publish to Maven Local task, which we can run to push to our local Maven repository. And then there's some additional configuration we need in order that we can then reference this plugin in the Gradle plugin DSL and that's going to involve this Gradle plugin configuration here where we define what plugins we want to deploy and we're going to have an element here for the file diff plugin and we're going to provide an ID and this is the ID that we'll use to reference our plugin in the plugin DSL so I'm going to say I want to reference it as Tom as com.tomgregory.filedif and then we also need to provide the implementation class and that's going to be the plugin. I'm going to copy it because I don't trust myself to type this correctly. And just to prove that I have a completely empty directory right now in my M2, here we go. And now we can run Gradle W publish to Maven local. And that runs successfully. And now we've got some contents here. So we've got a directory file diff plugin which contains the 001 snapshot version of the jar file. And interestingly, we also have another directory, and this is essentially the reference that we can use from our plugin DSL and if we go into the POM file here this POM file actually contains a dependency on the other artifact on the jar file so don't worry too much about why we've got two files here but essentially this first one is a reference to the second one. Now that we've published this Gradle plugin to the local Maven repository, let's go ahead and try out using it in another project like you would in real life. And to illustrate this, I'm going to use another project that was used on another video where we did a Maven to Gradle migration. And in that project, we had a requirement to compare to jar files. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clone that repo and then we're going to apply the file diff plugin and make sure that it compares those two jar files. So here we are in the Maven to Gradle migration project and we've actually got two jar files. One's here in build libs and maven to gradle.jar and we've got another one here in, in the target directory and we've got a requirement here just to compare the jar files built by Maven and Gradle. So first things first, in order to be able to use a plugin from Maven Local we need to make a change in the settings.gradle file and what we need to do is essentially configure this plugin management block here and we need to set the list of repositories for plugin management and we're going to add first up Maven Local it's going to look in our local Maven repo and also the Gradle plugin portal which is the default if you don't specify this at all so it's going to be looking in those two locations which now means that we can go ahead and in our build.gradle we can add the new plugin and as we saw before the reference is going to be com.tomgregory.com dot file dash diff and we do need to provide the version number which will be 001 dash snapshot and then let's go ahead and maybe down the bottom here we'll put the file diff configuration and you can see IntelliJ even understands and is offering autocomplete for this so file one in this case is going to be well let's go ahead and copy this file location And file 2 here 
is going to be whatever's in the target directory. And now we can go ahead and on the command line here, we're just going to run gradle w file diff. And we made a mistake here because if you remember, we need to refer to these as files. So we need to wrap this in the file directive so that it's of type file. Let's try that again. Okay, build successful. And we've got some output here. So it says file written to diffresult.txt. It's written the output file. And it's also printed the maven to gradle 001 snapshot.jar was the largest file and it's got the number of bytes here so that was the largest and if we go into build classes here or rather just build in diff result we've got the same output so this has worked exactly as we would expect on another project as well. So hopefully you can see now that writing plugins is a fairly straightforward process and it's a great way to encapsulate build logic and also to share that build logic between different projects. And if you like this video then please hit the like button and do subscribe to hear about other related topics in the future. And I am going to put the resources down below for the GitHub repo used in this project and also some information and documentation. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.